Genius sent me something shiny again today, and this is a 8 or 2.5 gig PoE switch, as well as it has four SFP plus 10 gigabit ports on it as well. So let's unbox this. Now this is the ECS 2512 FP. Quick installation guide. Got a serial cable here. That would be to console into the switch. Power cord, got some feet, some screws, and the rack mount ears. Nice. So here on the far left, we have the console port. And we got a button here for LED mode and a reset switch if you use like a paperclip or something. And then we have eight ports and these are all up to two and a half gig PLE. And then we have four ports of SFP plus up to 10 gig. So here we have the console port. And then we have a button for the LED mode and we've got the reset. You'll have to use like a paperclip or something here. And then we have eight 2.5 gig PLE ports. And then here we have four SFP plus ports that support either one gig SFP or 10 gig SFP plus. Now Ingenious did send this to me to review, so thank you, but they do not get to see this video before I release it and all of my opinions are my own. Now I'm wondering how loud this will be and we've got the fans over on this side here and my microphone is directly above here. So let's plug this in and see if we can hear it. Now it is on, but I can barely hear this. Now I walked away for a bit and now I can hear it. It's, it's not that loud, but let me know in the comment section down below if you can hear this. Now so you can hear it turn off, I'll unplug it. Now after the switch booted up, there was kind of a weird, I don't know if it was a glitch or if just the current firmware handles it this way, but it did not get a IP address from the Unify controller. I had to take my phone and open up the Ingenious Cloud app, scan the QR code and add it to my account. And shortly after, I then saw it picks up an IP address, but it did not do that. And it sat for well over, I wanna say about 10 minutes or so. And it never got an IP until after I added it to the cloud platform. Now, this is interesting. I logged directly into the switch after the firmware update, and not only does it look completely different, but when I first logged in, it says some of features are locked by cloud. Please configure these settings in cloud web page, e.g. VLAN, link aggregation, and spanning tree. Now that's interesting. Let's see what can we do with the switch. Not sure where we configure VLANs. There we go, VLANs. Now I've added some VLANs. Let's poke around here and see if it shows up. I'm assuming it will. I'd like to say that I like the older version of the firmware's interface better. It seemed more traditional. Oh, this is cool. So here, as I'm using all four SFP ports, it'll show us the module information. Now let's go over some of the tech specs of this switch. It is a pretty beefy switch with a backplane that can handle over 120 gigabits per second of throughput, so you shouldn't have any issues on packet loss if you saturated all these links. Now let's check out the product page of this. And we can see here, this is the ECS 2512FP, and this is cloud managed. Now by default, this switch is designed to be managed using the cloud controller online for free, and yes, in the cloud. But what about if you can't use the cloud? Well, I've got great news for you. Coming on over to the product page, if you take a look here, you can either select cloud or on-premise management. Now for the on-premise management, because when we did log into the switch earlier, it did have some limitations. So if we check out, this is the sky key and this is MSRP for 99 bucks. This supports up to hundred devices of access points and switches. So you'd be able to get this and manage it locally with this network controller. Now let's take a look at the tech specs on this here and also go over who this might be a good fit for. So here is the data sheet for the product and 
couple of things that I want to point out is that this has PoE++ and it supports up to like 240 watts right here. Now it does support 802.3 AF, AT, and BT, so you can pretty much plug most devices directly into this guy and it'll power it. Now under the hood this has 512 megabytes of RAM and for flash memory it has 128 megabytes. Now something I just noticed here under the network management is we are already aware about the Ingenious Cloud and the Sky Key. Now here's this other one here it's called Easy Master. Now I did come across this a while back Comment down below if you want to see me do a video specifically on this Easy Master software. From what I recall, you just run it on a machine and it becomes your network controller. But it has been a while since I ran it. Before Ingenious started to make devices that were cloud enabled, this was the software that you used to manage multiple devices instead of logging into each one locally. Now here it does list the local web GUI as well, but as we saw before, there's quite a few features that are no longer available. And I am curious if Ingenious will end up adding that back in any future firmware updates, but only time will tell. Now if we continue to scroll on down, there's quite a few L2 features because this is a layer two plus switch and it's not quite a layer three switch, but since it does offer a little bit more than just a standard layer two switch, they call it layer two plus. So who is this switch for? Well, with an MSRP, of $749. Unless if you need 2.5 gigabit PoE++ at home, this is mostly going to be for business users. Now, if you are in a business that cannot use anything that is cloud enabled, then there are options for you to be able to manage this with their SkyKey network controller. And when running the SkyKey network controller, you are managing everything inside of your own network. So if you are looking for a BP switch that doesn't make too much noise and is under $1,000 and also allows up to four 10 gigabit SFP Plus connections, then this might be the switch for you. Now, real quick, right up here, I've got a playlist for ingenious devices. So go ahead and check that out next.